The month of July is nearly here, which means one thing. It's almost my birthday. Happy birthday to me. Happy birthday to me. But I guess there's also new Nintendo Switch games coming out that we have to talk about as well. Every month I like to talk about the upcoming Nintendo Switch games for the next month, and the month of July has some pretty solid choices to choose from. We've got first party games, we've got exclusive games, we've got smaller indie games, there's really something for everyone in the month of July. So what games should you have on your radar for the Nintendo Switch? That's what we're going to talk about in this video. What's going on guys? I'm RGT85. If this is your first time on the channel, be sure to hit that subscribe button. But without any further ado, let's talk about the games that are coming out in the Nintendo Switch in the month of July and what games you need to be on the lookout for. The first game we're going to talk about is Catherine Full Body, which will be coming to the Nintendo Switch on July 7th. Now, Catherine Full Body is a game that I honestly probably won't play, but you might be interested in it, so I am including it on our list. What is Catherine Full Body? I, I really don't even know quite how to explain it. The game is essentially an action-adventure platformer love-style puzzle game in which you play as a character named Vincent, who is torn between his girlfriend and another girl named Catherine. The decisions you make in the game will impact the game as there's a ton of different endings and side stories as well, and it features a bunch of the DLC content that was added into the base game that released on the PlayStation 3. The action part of the game is essentially a puzzle platformer which you climb up blocks trying to avoid pitfalls and enemies that are in your way within a dream sequence. Catherine Full Body is honestly pretty weird and it's not really my style, but I do know that a lot of people are looking forward to this game, so here we go. RGT, a man of the people. Catherine Full Body will be hitting the Nintendo Switch, like I said, on July 7th. On July 9th, we have a game called Cross Code. Now, Cross Code is a pretty interesting looking game that seems to be a game that a lot of people played and liked on the PC, and it's now coming to the consoles on July 9th. So, what is Cross Code? Essentially, it's like a 16-bit visual aesthetic game that has a fast-paced action combat system, but it also touts that it has puzzles and dungeons similar to the Legend of Zelda series. The game says it has up to 80 hours of gameplay and over 30 boss fights, tons of new moves to learn, and a whole bunch more. I honestly think the combat in the game looks pretty cool and it's very fast paced and frantic. And the story of the game seems somewhat interesting as you're playing as a person who is playing a fictional MMO within the game. Like I said, this game released on PC a few years ago and many people have been wanting this game to come to the Nintendo Switch, so if you're one of those people, your wish is now answered. Crosscode is hitting the Nintendo Switch on July 9th. On July 10th, we have Deadly Premonition 2, A Blessing in Disguise, and really, it is no secret that I am a fan of the original Deadly Premonition, so A Deadly Premonition 2, A Blessing in Disguise is definitely near the top of my list for July Nintendo Switch games. Deadly Premonition 2, A Blessing in Disguise once again features Francis York Morgan, and this time he's investigating a murder in a small town in New Orleans, but this story of the game also intertwines with another FBI agent, Aaliyah Davis. Francis's part of the game takes place in 2005, where Aaliyah's part of the game takes place in 2019, so the game acts as both a prequel and a sequel to the original Deadly Premonition. It seems as much of the quirkiness of this part open world, part action, part horror game has been retained from the first game, and Francis now has a skateboard. And he can learn tricks. And he can upgrade these tricks. Y yes, I'm dead ass serious, like this game is just definitely off the rails. The graphics seem to have been improved over the first game, and honestly, it's really a shock that this game is even being made in the first place considering how polarizing the original game was, but I am totally here for it. Deadly Premonition 2 A Blessing in Disguise drops on the Nintendo Switch as a timed exclusive on July 10th, and honestly, I cannot wait for this game. I'm so old that I remember when Story of Seasons was actually called Harvest Moon. Yep, I'm old. But if you're looking for something similar to Animal Crossing, but with more of a farm aspect to it, Story of Seasons Friends of Mineral Town is coming out on July 14th and might be a game for you. Now this game originally released on the Game Boy Advance as Harvest Moon Friends of Mineral Town, Story of Seasons Friends of Mineral Town is an enhanced version of that game for the Nintendo Switch. Now if you've never played a Harvest Moon game before, they basically have a sort of pattern that they follow. You start out by getting a plot of land that is given to you, and you must essentially build up a farm. You plant crops, you tend to crops, you water crops, you raise livestock, you feed livestock, you go to town to buy supplies, basic things like that. 
You can also get married in this game if you're into that sort of stuff with a bunch of potential suitors to size up for your liking. So if you're looking for a relaxing experience, head on down to Mineral Town and make some friends with Story of Seasons, Friends of Mineral Town on July 14th for the Nintendo Switch. What happens when you take a Super Smash Brothers like setting but swap out the characters to popular indie characters? You get Bounty Battle, which is hitting the Nintendo Switch on July 16th. Bounty Battle features characters from games like Dead Cells, Owlboy, and Guacamelee, and puts them in a 2D fighter for up to four players to play. The game has a roster of over 25 characters from 20 as various indie games, each with their own movesets. Also included are 10 levels based on popular indie titles as well. I think the game looks pretty cool, but it does seem to have one problem. I don't think there's any online play in this game, which for a fighting game really makes no sense and sort of limits the mass appeal that this game could have. Hopefully the game receives an update to include some online play to extend the longevity of the game. Will you be checking out Bounty Battle on July 16th for the Switch? Let me know in the comments down below. While Nintendo has been super quiet with their 2020 plans, we at least know one thing. Paper Mario The Origami King is coming on July 17th and well, it looks absolutely spectacular. I've always enjoyed the Paper Mario series and although the last games weren't really the best representations of the franchise, Paper Mario The Origami King looks to steer the ship in a more proper direction. The dastardly King Ollie has turned Princess Peach into origami, and like clockwork, Mario must save her. Mario goes across several different areas in the game, meeting new allies, all while trying to take down King Ollie. The combat system has changed from previous titles, and honestly, I think it looks pretty solid. It uses a ring system in which Mario must try and line up enemies in order to take them out in the fastest time possible. The game of course features a ton of exploration and hidden areas that Mario can find with his thousand fold arms that allow him to do things like mess with the environment, mess with backgrounds, peel things off, and much more. And of course the game features some massive boss battles which you have to take down and they're based on things based on the origami stuff. So like a roll of tape. And honestly I can understand that too. If you've ever had a roll of tape that like gets stuck on itself and it just won't come undone, it's honestly one of the hardest boss battles that I've ever encountered in real life. Paper Mario The Origami King looks absolutely gorgeous and I think this will be a fantastic game. And you know what? We don't have to wait much longer to play it as it is coming out on the Switch on July 17th. Retro compilations are becoming more and more common on the Nintendo Switch, and a new one is coming, the Samurai Showdown Neo Geo Collection on July 28th. Now I know what you're saying to yourself, RGT, aren't most of the Samurai Showdown games already on the Nintendo Switch via the Arcade Archives Collection? And technically yes, you would be right, however this collection adds a little bit more of a punch to it. This collection of Samurai Showdown games features a version of Samurai Showdown that never released, Samurai Showdown 5 Perfect. Samurai Showdown 5 Perfect fixed some of the gameplay issues with the original game and Samurai Showdown 5 Special, and it also added in some new storyline elements as well. This game was supposed to be released on the Neo Geo and be the final Neo Geo released game, but it ended up being canned and has never been released until now. Beyond that cool aspect, you also have a great collection of Samurai Showdown games, featuring online play, a museum mode, and both Japanese and English versions of the game that are featured in this compilation. I will say there is one thing that annoys me though. It seems like Limited Run Games is handling the physical release of this game, which is fine. I've done business with them for years with no major issues, but they only have a collector's edition of this game and not a standard edition of this game. And the collector's edition is $70 and I don't know, that just seems very high. Beyond that though, I am very stoked to play this because, well, Samurai Showdown is cool. The Samurai Showdown Neo Geo Collection will be releasing on July 28th. Fairy Tale is coming to the Nintendo Switch on July 31st and, well, I, I have no idea what's happening in this trailer. I think this is a game based on an anime, and I don't really watch anime so I don't really know what to say about this game. And really, the trailer doesn't tell me much about the game either as far as gameplay mechanics are concerned. I'm going to assume it's an RPG though, so yeah, if you watch the show Fairy Tale, you probably already know about this game. I'm just here to remind you that Fairy Tale comes out on July 31st. 
There is one game that may release towards the tail end of July, but we don't have any confirmation of that, and that is Skater XL. Now, Skater XL was originally supposed to release in like the middle of July for the Nintendo Switch, but now the Nintendo Switch version has been delayed. We don't have a concrete release date for when this game will be coming out on the Nintendo Switch. I do hope it's sooner rather than later though, because I could really use a proper skateboarding experience to play on the Nintendo Switch. It's obviously sort of a spiritual successor to the Skate series. I think it looks really cool i was definitely very disappointed with sessions on the xbox one it just didn't feel like a proper skating game so i am looking forward to skater xl and i do hope that it comes out in the month of july all right, so that is going to do it for today's video. We got a bunch of different games to talk about, obviously. Some RPGs, some action games, Deadly Premonition 2, which, I mean, how do you even categorize that game? Like, I don't even know. But obviously, there is some cool stuff coming out on the Nintendo Switch in the month of July. So be sure to let me know what you think about the games in the comments section down below. What games you plan on picking up in the month of July for your Switch. And as always, guys, thank you for checking out this video. Like I said at the start, if you are new to the channel, make sure you subscribe and turn on notifications. Be sure to check out other videos on the channel as well and as always i will catch you guys on the next one later